So is buying unclaimed freight a huge, fat, diabolical scam? We've seen all these people on the internet buy big pallets of unclaimed freight for small amounts of money and then unboxing them and showing all these cool things and the value is now a small fortune. Case in point, this guy. But my question is, then what? Because I feel like this is like me buying a piece of dog poop and then telling everyone it's worth $1,000 without ever trying to sell it. Because the true value of something is what someone else is willing to pay for it, not what the owner declares it being worth. Or... MSRP. So to help us find out whether Unclaimed Freight is a scam or a profitable business model, let me show you how we got here. So we just bought two pallets of unclaimed motorcycle parts and this seemed like a really great idea because we only spent $9,000 and we were told it was worth over $40,000. However, I'm pretty sure when I bought it, it said $60,000. But when we actually got into the boxes, some of the stuff was just used junk that people returned. And the other stuff might just be parts that nobody actually wants. So instead of ending the video with a total MSRP value, saying look how much we made, this minus this equals this, we're gonna try our best to sell as much as we can and see if buying pallets like this is a business opportunity or a big fat scam. Here's how we're gonna do it. By using marketing. Step one, figure out who the buyer is. Step two, where do they shop? Step three, what's our value proposition? So the first step to any type of marketing strategy is to figure out who your customer is. And normally what you do is you start with the customer and then you try to figure out what their needs are and then you create a product that solves a problem that they have. Like M1 Moto Fast Detailer Spray, which we're not gonna talk about that. Uh, this is not a plug for M1 Moto Fast Detailer Spray, but it is available on Amazon right now. I see what you did there. And the problem that we have here is we have different types of products, which means we have different types of buyers. Let me explain. So here's what we can conclude. They're all motorcycle riders, but not all motorcycle riders are the same. You got dirt riders, you got Harley guys, you got sport bike riders, adventure riders, and the worst of all, Ducati riders. That's actually the first picture that shows up when you Google search Ducati riders. That's, that's I, I didn't choose that. That was what they chose. And one out of the two pallets was all Ducati parts. And the place that we think we're gonna find all these different types of uh, motorcycle riders, eBay. Yes eBay. The same place that we sold our YSR80 for $130,000, but then the buyer says he had nothing to do with it and doesn't even know what a YSR80 is. eBay, the scammiest place out there except for Craigslist. Let's start with these. These are like $1,000 exhausts. Okay. So how many of them do we have? I think we have three of the same ones. So me and Craig started out on our treacherous job of sorting out all the parts and trying to figure out exactly what they are and how to photograph them and list them. Okay, they're sixteen fifty on Amazon. Sixteen hundred fifty dollars. Sixteen hundred fifty dollars on Amazon. Ooh, we can also list them on Amazon. I didn't even think about that. Well, Ben's figuring out how to sell it on Amazon. We're gonna see this stuff that doesn't make sense to get put on Amazon, like this glove. Is there an option to sell one just like it on eBay? Yes. yes on Success. You got one on? Yes. Bam. Me too. You see that, Dan? Yeah. Pant twenty four Y. That sounds like a route. Youth Pant Navy twenty four Y. <laughs> Doesn't it? These are tiny little pants. Look at these little pants. Greg, look at it. Oh, it's so little. New with tags is an option, and I like to click on that because that's like the highest option. That's the most new is with new with tags. And because me and Craig are so lazy, everything's free shipping. We are working efficiently. Bam. Second one done. These are cool pants. I love this color. Ben's going to love doing this all week. <laughs> <laughs> As awful as day one was, listing all the things on eBay, day two was even worse. I even did all the tips and tricks that I learned from expert listers of how to stay productive, but none of them helped. So, do you think we have a gentleman's agreement that you will not show Sean any more skids of parts? <laughs> yep. Great. <laughs> It's all fun and games until somebody has to list it. All right, so we spent all day long listing stuff on eBay. I think we got 51 items on there and then seven items on Facebook Marketplace, things that I didn't think were gonna sell good on eBay. It was awful. It was, it was the worst thing ever. Let's see if we sold anything. Ben. Hey, morning, John. We sell anything? We have sold one helmet. Yes! Which one do we sell? The Master Chief looking one. 
Okay, so I'm doing my best to stay optimistic, but it's a pretty big deal that we have almost all of our products online and we've only sold one yet. And remember, we spent over $9,000 on these pallets. So at the, at the very least, I'm just trying to break even and hopefully within a timely manner. So hopefully we're gonna spend all day, everyone, all hands on deck, listing everything on eBay. And then we can start selling, making some money. As of right now, we've lost a lot of money. So day three looks pretty similar to day two, except for I have to be someplace else, anywhere else to be specific. And for some reason, it does appear that Craig spent the entire day eating, but I'm sure a lot of work got done also. All right, so it's the next day and everything is put on. Craig told me that everything is put on the website except for these handlebars, um, which he's, I think he's gonna work on. With the exception of this stuff, it's stuff that we just, we don't actually know what it's for. This is a radiator shroud from UFO. We don't know what that's for. This is some random clutch pack. Maybe you guys can help us out. We have no clue what this thing does. This is for a Ducati. I think it's for like the tail piece that connects to like the fender where you have like the seat. This goes up underneath there and then like the fender or the license plate. I think that's what it is, but we couldn't figure it out. But let's see with Ben uh, and see how many stuff we sold. Cause all stuff was listed all last night. So we probably sold I don't know, a couple thousand bucks. Hopefully, maybe we broke even. Update. So far, we have sold two helmets, but as of We yesterday, sold them yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Today, uh, nothing. We've sold nothing. Even the, the person that sent us an offer hasn't paid for that offer. So. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's not looking good, Sean. So, um, this is not going well. Any ideas, Craig? Well, we could send offers to potential buyers on eBay, people that looked at items. I really thought we were just going to drink coffee, prop our feet up, and watch the money come in. This is what I was imagining was going to happen. So we know who the customers are and we think that they shop on eBay. So slowly sales are trickling in. But there's also something that we're noticing about this process that when the boxes came in, they all had an MSRP on them with the manufacturer suggests what it gets retailed for. And this is the price that everyone thinks, oh, that's how much it's worth, so that's how much I can sell it for. Not really. See, the thing is only dealers and retail locations are able to sell for that price. Let me put it another way. Let's say you buy a microwave at Costco for a hundred bucks. You would never pay a hundred bucks or anything close to that for that same microwave, even if it was brand new in the box from the guy down the street. Because if it breaks or if it's damaged or you have to use a warranty or you just don't like it anymore, you can't take it back to the guy down the street, but Costco, we'll take it back. And now we're learning that retail prices was never even an option and th that number is just completely bogus, which is making the, the idea of us making a profit look a lot less likely. But we still have a lot of stuff to sell, so there's, there's still a possibility, but I've got another idea. All right, so eBay is a good passive way. It's a passive in the sense that you kind of let it go and you let it sit there, but we got to sell these parts a little bit faster. So we have a lot of Ducati parts, very specific parts, the kind of thing that it's very specific for that specific bike. I'm going to call, I'm going to make some phone calls. Make some phone calls, see if I can sell them. Maybe we can sell all this stuff. <clears throat> we are currently unable to answer parts calls due to stamping issues. Hey, my name is Sean. I have a very interesting request. I bought a couple pallets of uh, motorcycle parts, and one one pallet was all uh, late model Ducati parts. If I gave you the list of that stuff, would you have any interest in making me an offer on it? Uh, let me hear your name and number. Yeah, my name is Sean, S-E-A-N, and my number is 717. Uh, Okay, cool. <clears throat> yes, hey, my name is Sean, and I bought a uh, I bought a, a couple pallets of uh, unclaimed motorcycle parts. Your name is Sean. Yes. You have, a, uh, have a beard? I, I, I got a beard, yeah. Yes, okay, yes. You also have bikes, right? Yep, I got bikes. Yeah, I got I got both of those things. Perfect. Awesome, awesome. Okay, um, let me go and uh, put you a little bit of talk with the parts manager in one second, all right? Yeah, that'd be awesome. So as you can see, I'm trying to see if I can change our customer from the consumer to a retail location like the Ducati dealerships so that we can sell all the Ducati parts, which is half of what we have in one big swoop. And since the Ducati dealership would be able to sell a brand new product in the box for MSRP, and they normally expect to make around 30% margins on that. So since we have $20,000 for the parts, we could potentially sell it to them for $14,000, which would make us profitable, which is amazing. And even if they wanted to buy for half the price, that's still a good deal for them. It's a really good deal for them. And it's still a good deal for us because that, that gets us, uh, th then, we, then we more than break even, and then everything else we sell is all profit. Now, even though the one dealership, I think he thought was a scam, and I think he thought we stole it. Hopefully one of the other ones calls us back and says, hey, bring this stuff out to us. We'd like to buy your product. Yeah. 
Yes, hey, uh, my name is Sean, and I bought a uh, I bought a couple pallets of motorcycle parts. I got a big list here. Would you guys have any interest in buying that from me? Mm, probably not, but you can always email it to me if you want. Yeah, yeah. Can, I, can, I, can I send you a list, and then I'll call you back a little later? We'll, hey, we'll send this list right over. Kids, if you would have stopped at that first phone call where the guy said, can't sell these parts, you never would have gotten to that fourth phone call where he told you he, won't, he doesn't want to buy the parts, but he doesn't mean he can't sell <laughs> Never give up. Trying. Not a single dealership called us back. And the, the one guy actually thought that it might have been the shipment that he couldn't sell. So he packaged it up and put it online and sold it on one of those websites. So, so days and days passed. And to our surprise, things started looking up. And we started getting momentum and things started to sell. And then eBay cha-ching was the sound that filled our ears all day long. All right, so we've had all the stuff on eBay for at least, I think, 14 or 15 days. It's been at least two weeks. We're coming in. We're going to ask Ben to see how much uh, sandwich we sold on eBay. The total. Ben, what's the total? How much have we sold on eBay the whole system? All whole right, you ready for some suspense? I'm ready. Here I can't wait. This is going to be awesome. Hopefully, we at least broke <laughs> What? That's it? Oh, wait, shoot. I forgot the punctuation. We only sold 14,000? There we go. <laughs> 1400 Sean. Wait, less than 1400 That's less than $100 a day. Okay, hold on. Let me uh, let me put these numbers together for you guys of what just happened. We paid $9,000 for these pallets. They told us that we had an MSRP of around $40,000, which means that we, we, had, we thought we had $31,000 in profit. Now, we found out that at least $530, of that was trash, minus $530. We kept three, we kept, we kept $3,400 of it for ourselves. $3,425. We listed everything on eBay. We sold $1,403 in two weeks. The MSRP on that stuff was $39.66. So that ends up being 35% of what the MSRP was. You could probably only sell this stuff used, or even though it's new, but you're not selling from the dealership at 35%. So that means that the entire, if the entire $40,000 is only worth 35% of the actual MSRP, that means the entire pallet was only ever worth $14,000 minus the trash, minus the stuff we kept for ourselves. That means best case scenario, we only have $10,445 to work with of potential profit, but we were only able to sell $1,400 of it. So it might take us a year to sell the rest. And that means we barely break even from what we paid for it. At that point, if we sell everything, we're making just over $1,000. But we had three people full time listing this stuff for how many days? For two days. 32 man hours. Let's say 20 bucks an hour. That's 640 bucks minus 640 dollars, which ends up being 360 dollars. Yeah, I think we got scammed. I'm never gonna do that again. It was kind of an awful idea. No, it was a great idea, but it just didn't work out well. Also, we have pallets and pallets of boxes that, that's gonna just take up warehouse space for the next indefinitely. So here's the plan. We have a live stream coming up. Not exactly sure when. Keep an eye out for it. We're going to try to give away a lot of this stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. But until that moment, I, I got a thing. Come on. Come on, Craig. Coming. A lot of you guys have been wondering, where's the sheriff department? So I saw this video where a guy, he was a policeman. He was on a uh, Victory Vision, one of the biggest bikes out there. And he said he was actually able, if he's doing slow maneuvering, to lay down the bike. If it's not completely stopped and like settled, he can lay it down and just give it some gas and pull right out of it. Me and Craig are going to see if we can do that on our surf bikes. We are? Yeah, it's going to be great. Oh, yeah. It feels good to be back on a surf department bike again. Help me lean my bike over, and I'll stay on the bike, and I'll try to throttle out of it. Nope, I can't do it. <laughs> Those visions sit differently. They don't go over as far. Let's see. Let's go in the call in a sec. Let's see if I can get these things to drag real quick. Am I dragging? And my clothes. I kind of thought I'd be able to do it. It was fun trying. I think I know what the problem is though. These bikes need more power. Think about it. Subscribe, check this video right here. We'll see you guys next time. Isn't it good to be back on these bikes though? It is, I wanna go for a ride.